Something is very wrong with stocks, and I believe it's due to the underlying economy. On Friday, we got non-farm payrolls. Uh, it previously came in at 223,000. It was forecast to come in at 106,000. Now, the reason they forecast a decrease is because they knew uh, with the hurricanes hitting uh, the south and with Boeing having 48,000 people on strike, that it was going to be decreased uh, uh, by at least 100,000. But nobody expected it to be decreased by over 200,000. The actual came in at 12,000. Now, in the past, I've been saying if it went below 150,000, it'd be time for concern. And you can explain it away with the strikes and with, uh, Bo with Boeing and with the hurricanes. Uh, but I think this is really too much. There's something else going on. Uh, manufacturing isn't doing well. Uh, this is a very bad sign, in my opinion. I'm wondering if we're being given too optimistic of a picture of the U.S. economy in spite of the non-farm payrolls coming in much lower than expected. The unemployment rate somehow remained the same. How do you have 200,000 less jobs than, than are expected and the unemployment rate does not go up whatsoever? Uh, that is almost unbelievable in my opinion. The 10-year bond has also been acting very strange. Uh, it's gone from uh, around 3.8% at the beginning of October uh, to almost uh, 4.4 percent as of November 1st. Uh, that is an increase of almost 0.6 uh, percent. That is a very rapid move for interest rates on the long-term side. You have this weird response of interest rates at the short end, uh, the overnight rate, are going to go down. Uh, but the 10-year Treasury note, and especially like the 30-year, that, that's gone up massively also, uh, more so than the 10-year Treasury note. Uh, so what is the explanation for this? Part of it might be due to the Federal Reserve reducing its balance sheet. It was over $8 trillion. When the Federal Reserve buys, that tends to lower interest rates. And when they sell bonds, it tends to increase interest rates. So they've sold over a trillion worth of bonds to get it down to $7 trillion on their on their balance sheet. And that increases the long-term interest rates. It doesn't affect the short-term very much, but it mainly affects the longer-term interest rates. This is very beneficial for banks because they rely on their long-term interest rates being longer on home mortgages and cars, for example. So it could be the Federal Reserve is helping banks out, which it certainly is doing. The warning sign in my mind is always when the unemployment rate uh, starts to go up. And it's just amazing that it didn't go up after that non-farm payrolls uh, report. But another thing that happens is your gross domestic product goes down and it's starting to go down. On Friday, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, their GDP now, uh, they try to project what the fourth quarter GDP will be. Now, until recently, it was like at 3%. Then it came down to 2.7%. But now, as of November 1st, they're projecting that it's going to be 2.3%. So your GDP is coming down and the and the non-farm payrolls is going up, although we don't know exactly how much of that is due to hurricanes and the strikes. So th this is a potential bad situation, and it's just whether they're uh, attributing too much of that non-farm payrolls to the hurricanes. Another thing that gives me pause 
is uh, Warren Buffett is selling stock. Berkshire Hathaway's cash fortress tops $300 billion as Buffett sells more stock and freezes buybacks. <laughs> His monstrous cash pile is actually $325 billion. He has continued his stock selling spree, and he has not been repurchasing shares. It's gone up to $325 billion. That's by the, as of the end of September, which was up from $276 billion. The mountain of cash is, keeps growing as he sold a lot of his equity holdings, mainly Apple, and Bank of America. He's dumped about a quarter of of Apple in the third quarter, and this is the fourth consecutive quarter that he that he's downsized his Apple stock since mid July. He sold ten billion of his Bank of America stock. He's in a selling mood. He's ninety four years old. He's basically. Uh, sold $36 billion worth of stock in the third quarter. So it's even more strange that he's not buying any of his own stock, which would tend to, to help the price of his stock hold up, as he bought $345 million worth of, of Berkshire stock in the second quarter. Uh, so he, he often does that. But even in the second quarter, that was significantly lower than the two billion dollars worth that that was repurchased in each of the previous two quarters. So he's been a, on a, a downward slide on buying stocks for at least the last year. Right now, Berkshire's top five holdings as of the end of the third quarter are Apple at sixty nine billion. Bank of America at thirty one billion. American Express at forty one billion. Coca-Cola at $28 billion, and Chevron at $17 billion. Berkshire sold more Bank of America shares in October, so the value could be below the $31 billion by now. The closer you look at the employment situation, the worse it looks. Even backing off and not overreacting to the October surprise of how low that was, but the general trend in hiring has been uh, slowing since 2001. Uh, looking at uh, the chart, the hiring continues to slow. U.S. payrolls grew on average 183,000 a month from 2010 to 2019. After largely exceeding that during the pandemic, recent job growth has been, been well below that trend. And you can see it was up, you know, in January 2021, it was above 700,000 for some months, and that was going into 2022. So that was quite a year. And now we haven't seen 300,000 since uh, early 2024, and it's been going down. And the recent job numbers are actually just horrible. And there's a longer-term trend of people that have been unemployed for a while having a harder time uh, finding a job. They call it job finding, uh, the, which is uh, the, the number of people each month joining the labor force directly into a job or finding a job after a spell of unemployment has been falling, consistent with slowed hiring and a more difficult job search environment. So uh, looking at the chart, you can see in 2021 and 2022, you know, it was getting close to 7 million people who had been unemployed for a while, uh, 7 million people per month that had been unemployed for a while were finding a job. And now it's gradually come down uh, and it's getting close to only 6 million people a month uh, finding a job if they've been um, unemployed for a while. So that's a million people less per month finding a job if you've been out of a job for a while. This is not good. 